You're listening to RageInternetRadio.com, and this is the Raw Wrestling Report, episode 13. After weeks of anticipation, finally landing on Monday Night Raw, from Planet Funk, weighing 375 pounds, please welcome the Funkasaurus, Brutus Clay! Funk is on a roll. One of the weirdest things I have ever seen on Monday Night Raw happened last week when Brodus Clay finally, and I do mean finally, made his debut on Raw after all kinds of anticipation and uh, build-up and teasing and taunting by the WWE. And he finally comes out, and what do we get but... The weirdest piece of crap I've ever seen. We basically got the watered-down godfather. Um, Now, I have a lot to get to on this, so please stick with me if you can. And I'm going to do my best to to open up my my list of things to get to. And first off, what I want to say is, you know what? We're going to get right to the comments. Uh, From what I've seen, 7 out of 10 people hate this and were disgusted by it. Um, I just couldn't change the channel because I was just, my flo- my jaw was in the floor, buried through the remote. Uh, but let's get to some negative comments I have about what I've said. Um, I said nobody likes it and everybody's upset and this is dumb and his career's over type of thing. I might be wrong with that, but here's the deal. Somebody writes, no, uh, well, Babbins1 on YouTube writes, nobody likes it. He was the number one trending worldwide. All right, well, first of all, that doesn't mean shit, okay? Telling me he's the number one trend doesn't mean nobody likes it. It just meant everyone was shocked because they thought this awesome entrance or something was coming from Brodus Clay and he was going to be, you know, crazy or something or other. And instead, this joke comes out. Of course, it doesn't matter if it was good, bad, or whatever. Of course, it trended. It was shocking, You know, it was shocking because it was bad. It wasn't a good shocking. The only one positive I will say this entire time, this entire rant about Raw last week and Brodus Clay, is that it did get people talking. Whether it was negative, I mean, bad or good or whatever, they actually got people talking. So, you know, that worked. But in the long haul for Brodus' career, and me as a fan who wanted to see him, you know, do something... This is just hilarious. I mean, I mean, a career killer as far as I'm concerned. I'll never be able to take the guy seriously. Um, he also said people who lo- people loved Rikishi and D'Lo Brown and the Godfather gimmick. Oh, really? They did? How long did Rikishi and D'Lo Brown last? Tell me that. And then number two, what was D'Lo Brown's gimmick? All He came out and shook his head and got in the ring and wrestled. He didn't do that much stuff. As, what gimmick did D'Lo have? I, he was in the Nation of Domination. And then he had the vest thing when he hurt his chest. That's about all I remember. And he tagged with, like, Owen Hart or Jeff Jarrett or somebody. And uh, what gimmick? What is you? What are you talking about? D'Lo Brown didn't come out dancing like an idiot, like a Funkasaurus, and, and dancing horribly. None of that happened. Now, with Rikishi, number one, I hated that anyway. I didn't even like it. But that's just me. Everybody else did like it. But that was actually fun. Because even though it was goofy and stuff, he had like this big ass, golf ball ass that he'd put into people's bodies. And he was good in the ring. And he also didn't do all these dumb, weird gyrations all over the place. He It was just enough. And also, mind you, this took place during kind of the Attitude Era. You know, when that stuff was still going on. So you see blood in one match and crazy stripping and stuff I don't even like the stripping but you'd see some crazy stuff in other matches and then you see this goofy dancing thing so it was different I liked it but now that Raw is all PG and it's all crappy anyway and you have as a fan like me you have to really you know reach out to get five or ten minutes of Raw that you enjoyed now this guy's coming on I mean this is horrible 
And the other thing was Rikishi just was believable. This just looked like he looked out of place. He looked bad. Out of place, annoying, stupid. I mean, I can't even come up with enough uh, descriptive words to come to describe what I saw. Now, the Godfather was awesome, but he had the ho train, okay? This guy doesn't have the ho train. He's got a couple of girls dancing, and he's an idiot. You know what I mean? The Godfather said some funny stuff on the mic. The only thing that will save Brodus Clay's career is if next week he is in a fight with John Laurinaitis in the back and he says, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm a wrestler and I, I want to be my, on my own and have John Laurinaitis say, shut up, you'll get out there and you'll do what you're told or you won't get a chance to wrestle. Something like that to controversy. That's the only thing that will save his career. I mean, maybe this will get better and people will start to like it. I just If that happens, I'm, all I know is I'm changing the channel. Every time he comes on. Um, that hurl will get insanely booed. One of the two. Um, and then this guy goes, who wants to be a... He continues. He says, who wants to see an old, boring, typical monster heel gimmick? Um, this gimmick will eventually make him one of the top mid-carders. Really? How did that work out for Godfather? Huh? How did that work out for Rikishi? Huh? How did that work out for D'Lo fucking Brown? You don't know what you're talking about, Babbins1. Who writes me on YouTube this garbage? People loved Rikishi, D'Lo, and Godfather. It didn't get them anywhere after a couple years, right? Godfather of all of them had the biggest run. And once they toned it down and stopped doing the hoe thing, it, it got worse. And then it died because he had the hose and that's all he had. He had the hoe train and the hose, and it's on, it's done. D'Lo Brown, done. Rikishi, done. So don't tell me that those are going to get someone anywhere, uh, except for maybe, you know, briefly. Um, and this guy just continues to say stupid things about me that he doesn't know. Um, now, I'm not saying that he could catch on, and it could, you know, whatever, but... Uh, all I know is that, uh, I mean, you're going to be dealing with some really goofy children that like that. I mean, that's about it. I mean, it was kind of funny. Just now it's funnier. The night it happened, I just, I couldn't even speak. I just could not believe I was seeing what I was seeing on the TV. I mean, he went from being this threatening, menace, bad guy, big guy, to just being a joke in like two seconds. And then... To have, I forget who he fought, Kurt, uh, um, Hawkins, poor Kurt Hawkins, who, <laughs> who's a great wrestler. I want to see Kurt Hawkins wrestle now. I don't want to see Brodus Gay, and that's what I'm calling him, Brodus Gay, because it's stupid. Uh, and then this other guy says, I'm going to be left behind because I don't like Brodus Clay. I don't think so, buddy. I've been watching wrestling since 1988. I'm not going to get left behind. But the WWE pay-per-view buy rate will get left behind because I won't buy it. Uh, you look at the pay-per-views, I probably, from 1997 to 2002, I think I bought every pay-per-view there was. And then uh, when Michaels, Shawn Michaels was wrestling towards the end of the 2005-2000, uh, as soon as he had his match with Triple H it's at SummerSlam and on, I started buying more. And that was because of Shawn Michaels. And the wrestling and stuff. And now the wrestling is just so watered down and scripted. It's not even fun to watch anymore. It really isn't. People always say, oh, you complain. You wish it was the Attitude Era. But most of the time, WWE was always PG and stuff like that. Well, sure, they were. But even in 1991 and 2 and all those times, they had better matches than now. Because they weren't so scripted. You know, I watch a match like Bret Hart versus... Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 8. Go watch that match. I thought that was awesome. WrestleMania 8, Tito Santana versus Shawn Michaels. Some of those type of matches are way better than what you see now, you know, on Raw. And so for people to say that it's just because of the blood and the craziness that I like the Attitude Era, they're wrong. It was the rawness of it that I liked. If they they don't even they don't have to bring back Shawn Michaels taking his clothes off and showing his ass on the camera and everybody saying the F word and bringing Sable out, taking her tit tits out. I don't care about that. It was the rawness and the controversy. Bret Hart turning, you know, bad sort of and 
Canadians versus Americans and all this stuff that was happening. I mean, it was it was the darkest it got here, and it was fun. The Undertaker's ministry angle, the whole thing. I mean, the most interesting thing I've seen on Raw, I think, this week, besides Jericho, which is just a mystery. I don't know what's going on with that, and we'll get to that in the next... After this video, I'm going to be doing a whole video about Raw. Right now, we're just supposed to be talking about Brodus Clay, but I'm going to get off on a tangent, as always. Um, and that's just, you know, that's what I do, so... But... Oh, God, he looks like an idiot. Um, He does look like a moron. Uh, but, you know, I think Kane has been the most interesting guy on Raw with it, with his darkness and talking to the crowd and everything. I love that. I think Kane has been doing a really good job, and what they're writing with him is awesome. Kane's keeping me entertained, and so is in Jericho a little bit. But, you know, I'm just wondering when, he's gonna, when it's going to get to the point. But knowing Jericho having pretty much full creative control with his character, he's got something up his sleeve. As opposed to a lot of these other guys when they start something like this and it just disappears and you wonder, what the fuck happened with that? They didn't even finish it. They just kind of just dumped it away. You know, Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon changed his mind for the 50th time and we didn't get the end of the story or the payoff. But we'll get it with Jericho, I gotta believe. You know? Oh, God. I mean, he looks like an idiot. Anyway, I'm sorry. to. This has been this video is way too long that I want. I just wanted to talk about Brodus Clay. Uh, we're live every week on Rage Internet Radio at RageInternetRadio.com. Um, and I also want to say, too, that this song and this whole gimmick was supposed to be a different wrestlers back in 2003, and they killed it. And now they bring it back now. So I think that's the other thing. People are like... Uh, he, wow, he just looks dumb. It is dumb. I'm going to puke on myself. I will change the channel next week. I, you know what? Maybe not next week, but the third week I will change the channel. I won't. I'll be done with it. I'm only going to keep the channel on next week to see if people boo him. Because the, they might not have booed him the other night, but they were dead silent. I'll tell you that. And for all you old school WWE fans, WWF fans, uh, he reminds me big time of Akeem. Okay, Akeem doing that stupid dance with his hands and his body. And people brought that up too. Nobody liked Hakeem. Okay, I don't even, I still to this day sometimes go back and wonder why he was a wrestler. I mean, he was just stupid and lame and boring. And that's what this reminds me of. So, whatever. All right. So anyway, RageInternetRadio.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Our next video coming up on YouTube, we're going to talk about Raw last week, get into the whole Raw show as opposed to just nitpicking like we did today. All right. We'll talk to you then. I'm Dan Cronin. This is RageInternetRadio.com.